Okay, here we are in New Orleans. Just uh, picked out a little bit at the old IHOP. And I don't care where you go, IHOP is good everywhere. Mm -mm. Okay, I'm in the car with uh, Jeff from Project Shining City and Paul, his partner. Paul, what's your last name? Samansky. And Paul, you're also a teacher? Yeah, I'm a teacher in, uh, uh, in a prison <clears throat> in Cheshire, Connecticut. Oh, wow. And let me ask you guys. First of all, I want to thank both of you for uh, having me and Courtney down here to uh, ride shotgun with you guys as we try and figure out uh, exactly uh, the validity to this media blackout that's going on down here in New Orleans. Um, so far, have you guys uh, run into any of that uh, behavior? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, we were on uh, multiple locations. Obviously, all the first responders, any government guys I gotta try to find uh, 10 all right most of the government guys uh, whether it's Coast Guard or um, uh, any cleanup workers any cleanup workers like that have been told literally not to say anything I actually spoke to some Coast Guard fellas and I asked them is there actually what I heard there was oil coming in like poncho train no comment so all we're getting is no comment so and even the uh, laborers the the groups of fellas uh, charged with cleaning up the beaches yes they were also told and they will not they will not comment um, they will not comment at all so at that point we as far as any of the first responders or cleanup crews nobody's talking but the locals are so you think we'll, we'll have a chance to talk to some of those uh, folks yes um, best case scenario is we're gonna speak to Roland the, uh, the shrimp boat captain okay off of Lake Poncho train um, supposedly he's getting a whole bunch of his guys together they're all fired up on this because they're not getting their, their uh, I guess reimbursement checks from BP on time or they're not getting them at all they're uh, basically bringing in um, boat crews from out of state where they where these local guys were promised work since they've already been their livelihoods are out of business what else are they gonna do they might as well uh, set up um, buoys and skimmers and stuff now I've been hearing uh, that there's been a lot of fresh kill areas. Paul, you want to comment on uh, exactly what a fresh kill is? Fresh kill is an area that's lost its oxygen. Uh, so they actually call it a dead zone. A dead zone is an oxygen uh, absent area. And they don't just happen. And when they form, they form in huge uh, underground uh, plumes. Uh, the chemicals that are being released from the wellhead at 60,000 barrels a day are probably creating dead zones that mostly have been undiscovered. But who discovers them first? The fishermen. And Roland uh, mentioned to us that he has a friend who came across a fish kill, washed up fish kill in one of the estuaries, probably 30 miles or 40 miles south, uh, maybe in the direction we're going right now. Uh, where they reported thousands of dead fish up on an estuary beach or a swampland. And the grasslands, by the way, are huge and the grass is tall and high. Uh, we, we haven't investigated that, but it's certainly something we'd like to look into. So a dead zone is created by an oxygen-lost environment in the ocean. Which is instant death for any marine life. It appears to be, yeah. Now, uh, we've talked to other fishermen besides Roland and what they've told us is that the fish, a lot of the fish are smart and of course they move out of the areas. So they're seeing areas now and we're the, certainly the areas where we're going now in Venice. Those areas will probably tell us that the fish have left the area. Certainly the porpoises have too. The, the fish and the porpoises, the marine mammals, except for the turtles of course who are the slowest to move, uh, are responding in their own natural way to get the hell out of there. And they are. They're getting the hell out of there. Uh, let's hope they make it. Okay, gents. Um, I'll close for now and on to our next little adventure. Stay tuned.